evening. We begin our worship this evening of this graduation service with the hymn Father Welcomes, which can be found on page 605 in the Pew Hymnals. 605, Father Welcomes. <laughs> and my father is the 
vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my works abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the singing of the hymn, Beautiful Savior, King of Creation, found in your Q hymnals on page 537. 537, Beautiful Savior.
accomplish that. Um, they don't just give diplomas here for the heck of it. Uh, you are graduating eighth grade of Trinity Lutheran School, and you're here tonight because you earned it. This was not given to you. There are certain things you had to accomplish, and in a certain way, and you guys did what you had to do to earn this diploma that you got tonight. You got this through hard work, through dedication, and you ought to be proud of yourselves. This is an accomplishment that you should cherish. You know, I was thinking, I'm getting so old. This is my ninth graduation address at this school. It doesn't even seem possible that I've done that many, but the cool thing is that every class has its own kind of personality. It has its own dynamic. None of them are the, are the same, and it's the same thing this year with you two. You guys were unique in your own way. Um, you two had incredible chemistry together. You guys kind of fed off of each other. Both of you actually are very, very funny guys. Um, you guys make me laugh a lot, and that's hard to do because I'm getting to be a grumpy old man, but you guys make me laugh quite a bit. You guys are funny. Um, you would just kind of see it. You know, Aiden would sort of pester Tyler, and then Tyler would get a little feather truffled, and then, you know, the next day, Tyler's going to get him back, so Tyler has to egg on Aiden, and it would always end in good fun, because you guys <laughs> always would be laughing about it, I mean, nobody ever got, like, mad or nothing, but the way you guys would pick at each other um, and get me sucked into it sometimes, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed both of you very much. Um... Tonight is what is known as a milestone, an accomplishment. Always take the time to appreciate the milestones that come across in your life. Always do that. Take the time to reflect on what a great thing you two have just accomplished tonight. Be proud of what you've done. You've done something worth being proud of. Congratulate yourselves. Now, this might be one of the first major milestones you guys have had in your lives, but you ought to get used to them because life is full of milestones. And the reason why you should take the time and reflect on this and kind of take a minute to smell the roses is because you're going to find out at some point life goes by pretty fast. Because you're sitting here reflecting on the fact that you've graduated from middle school. You will be shocked how quickly it'll be before you're graduating high school. And then you're going to be graduating college or starting a career of some sort. And then you're going to be getting married. And then you're going to be having kids. And then you're going to be having grandkids. And then you're going to be retired. Life is about chapters. So make sure you take the time to appreciate them as they come. Now, it's always kind of been my deal every year to uh, take a few minutes to talk individually to each graduate, and uh, I'm going to do that again this year. So first, we have eight. The thing that I'm going to remember about Aiden, and you know what, I, I learned this about you this year because I've been working with you for a couple years now, but the thing that I will remember that I learned about you this year going through confirmation with you is that you have an amazing capacity to learn. You have an unbelievable ability to take in information. Well, when you're focused. <laughs> when you have your mind on what you're doing, it's like soaking up information with a sponge. I mean, Every year when confirmation time comes around, it's always very hectic because it's always in May. It's the end of the school year. you got a lot of stuff going on. And I'm always stressing, okay, have I prepared them to pass the oral exam? Because, you know, the oral exam is kind of tough, right? And so this year, well,
was a little extra busy for me, and I didn't have as much time to spend with you as I would have wanted, so I'm kind of like, boy, I hope he knows this stuff. And so we went in the conference room a couple of times, and we went through the stuff, and I was so pleasantly surprised how well you retained all of that stuff we talked about all year. You might have needed a, a little thing to jog your memory kind of a little bit, but it flowed, and after a couple of times, um, you had it. And that's a gift that God gave you. Um, you have the capacity to be a really, really good student in high school. You really do. I'm also going to remember you as a guy, you're always trying to make people laugh. You know, you're always the prankster. You're always cutting up. If you're going to be around Aiden, you're going to have fun. And that's going to serve you well also in high school because you're going to, that ability that you have is going to allow you to do well with making friends. You're always going to do well with making friends because you're fun to be around, and yet at the same time, even though, let see, you're a man after my own heart, actually, because you like to jump with people, you like to pester people, you like to annoy people, that's what I do, and you're pretty good at it, but at the same time, you're also a very caring person. You really do care about the feelings of the people around you, and so when you put all of that stuff together, um, you're going to do really well, so... Don't change a thing and stay focused, and you're going to do amazing in high school. And my friend Tyler, that smile is how I'm going to remember Tyler. <laughs> um, I didn't get to know Tyler until he came here this year. I had known Amy for a little while, but Tyler came in new, and... Um, I remember first getting to know Tyler while you were playing volleyball. And, you know, you grew. You uh, you evolved as a pretty decent volleyball player the more the season went on. And uh, the thing I remember about watching you play volleyball, because I didn't get to know you yet, but you were trying really, really hard. You were like totally focused. You wanted to please. You wanted to be part of the team. And I was just really impressed at how well you were doing and how much effort you were putting in to try to become part of the group. And that's not easy to do. You know, when you walk in from the outside and you don't know anybody, sometimes it's just easier to kind of stay off in the corner, but you didn't do that. I mean, you got right in. You were engaged with the kids. And you did really, really well. You, given the circumstances, this was a difficult year, and you did amazing. When I had you in class, I'm going to remember you as very thoughtful. Because, you know, we would be going through all of the stuff we talked about in religion class. And, you know, Tyler was one of those people where you would say something, and you could actually see the gears turning in Tyler. You could see him processing, and he's thinking, and he's processing. And Tyler would be the one in the middle of some rant that I was on. Tyler would raise his hand and he would always have this incredibly thought provocative question. Tyler was always asking questions. Tyler thinks. Tyler is a very thoughtful young man. Tyler is also very intelligent. Now the thing the also, to, to me, the thing that shines through about Tyler is that Tyler is an incredibly, incredibly kind human being. You are a very, very nice guy. You're a funny guy. You're likable. You're a good person. And these also are qualities that when you go to high school, it's going to serve you very, very well because the world needs a lot more good people. And in a world that just sometimes loses its way, you can be that nice guy, nice kid in school that people will naturally be attracted to because you're different. So when you go to high school, all you have to do is believe in yourself, 
because you're a good person and you have what it takes to succeed just like Aiden does. Believe you can do it, and you will. You were, you were a real joy this year. You really were. So now, middle school and Trinity's over with. Next is high school. Um, y'all ready for high school? <laughs> Tyler says yes, Aiden says no. <laughs> I ask the question every year. It's funny to see how they react. Um, you know, high school is kind of scary, especially, you know, when you're just finishing the eighth grade, but you guys can handle it. Um, just take it seriously. High school is hard, but see, the thing is, anything in life worth accomplishing is hard. Nothing, nothing worth doing in life is easy. High school's no exception. But the thing is, you guys don't have to be afraid because you have what it takes. Number one, the biggest deal with high school, maybe, is that it's such a huge adjustment. I mean, you've been in a small school here, and you're going to go to a bigger school. Everything's going to be new. If you're going to have new buildings, you're going to have a new schedule, you're going to have a new routine, you're going to have new friends. And so sometimes, at least when you're first getting started, the new can be a little bit overwhelming. But remember, you can do it because that simply means that you're growing. You're moving on to the next challenge in life. And you guys are up to the task. The other thing you have to remember is that I personally believe both of you will do well in high school because though high school is difficult, well, guess what? Trinity's no walk in the park. Trinity was hard, too, in its own way. You were looking at an elite group of teachers, and these teachers are incredibly talented in what they do. They all wanted you two to succeed, and they were difficult on you. And especially Mr. B, he had the most influence on you guys this year. Mr. <laughs> B was hard on you, not because he wanted to be mean, but he wants to prepare you for success in high school. And between Mr. B and Miss Carroll and all of the teachers here, you learned two things at Trinity, if nothing else. You learned work ethic, and you learned right from wrong. And so because they were hard on you, because they instilled in you a work ethic and an attitude and an approach to schoolwork, that's exactly what it takes to succeed in high school. So you have the foundation to do well. So to succeed in high school, the formula for success there is the same thing as this Trinity actually. Three things. Number one, like we talked about, work hard. Work hard. It doesn't matter how good of a student you may or may not be, or even how good of a student you may or may not think you are. Anybody can work hard. Anybody can do their best. And that's all anyone can do. Work hard and do your best. You were taught a good work ethic here because a good work ethic will always lead to success. If you work hard, good things will always happen. Try your best. Take it seriously. You know what? Don't be too proud to ask for help. The last thing in the world you want to do is kind of get stuck, get fall behind because you don't understand. Ask somebody for help. Ask teachers. Ask counselors. Come back here and ask these people. We're here for you. Just keep grinding one day at a time. Work hard, and it's going to go well. You know, the challenges are growing, but you guys are growing too. You two weren't the same as you were when this school year started. Aiden certainly wasn't the same as the sixth grade Aiden, I remember. You guys are growing. So the challenges are getting bigger, but you're getting bigger too. You are up to the challenge of high school, so work hard. Number two, make good choices. Make good choices. The simple fact of truth that I hope you never actually find out is that the consequences for poor decision making get more difficult the older you get. Because if you guys make poor choices now, all right, maybe you'll get grounded, maybe you'll have something taken away. 
when one makes poor decisions as an adult, sometimes they can actually be life altering. Now, the good news is you have been taught right from wrong between your parents and between this school. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. You know what is a good choice and what is a bad choice. So you have been prepared to make wise choices. So make wise choices. All right, so one, work hard. Two, make good choices. Number three, and the most important, never forget how badly you two need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. I need Jesus. The teachers need Jesus. We all need Jesus on a daily basis. Now, the thing that may very well change for you that you've got to adjust to the most is in a Christian school, you're going to get religion taught to you every single day. You don't have to work very hard in a Christian school to be connected to Jesus. But if you go to a non-Christian school, that's not going to be the case. So it becomes all the more important for you to stay connected to Jesus through going to church. You know, we got to do it one more time, right? Aiden, what's the third commandment? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, Tyler, if I were to ask you to explain what the meaning of that commandment is to one of your friends, what would you say? Remember the cell phone analogy I taught you to? You remember that one? Tell me you haven't forgotten that already. All right, bail him out, Aiden. He's freezing like a deer in the headlights. What were you taught about the meaning of the third commandment? That's how you recharge your faith, because if you don't recharge your faith like a cell phone battery, it's going to get weak and it's going to die. You've got to plug in your phone. You've got to charge your faith, and that's what happens in church. You don't go to church to kind of get in good with God or whatever. You get in church. You go to church because you need to be here. We all do. That's how God gives you his strength. Now, the thing is, we said to work hard and make good choices. Jesus gives you the mentality to have a good work ethic because good work ethic is a godly attribute and Jesus will help you make good choices because a good moral compass also comes from Jesus. So in actuality, Jesus is the key to success in high school because he's going to keep your mind and your heart right, focused on doing what you're supposed to be doing. He gave you the skills and the blessings that you guys have and he's going to keep them strong. So remember, work hard, make good choices, and you need Jesus. Now lastly, and this is always the part that I don't like every year, but I got to do it. I want to take a moment to tell you to thank you. Because you guys were a lot of fun to me. Every year... I always seem to learn as much from the students as I feel like I teach them. Maybe I even learn more than I teach, but you guys were a class that I look forward to teaching. I look forward to getting in there with you guys because we had a lot of fun, but we also learned a lot of stuff. We had good conversations, good questions, good answers, and you guys were really easy to work with and a joy, and so I want to thank you for being good students. Um, I want to let you know that Trinity will always be your school. It doesn't matter whether you're an actual student here. This is always your school. And Trinity is always available here also for your church. I know, Tyler, you have a wonderful church you attend. Aiden, this is the church you're a member of. Um, so this is always a place that's going to be here for you. Mr. Baron Cloud and all of the teachers want to see you do well, and they'll do everything they can to help you, even though you're not a student here. You call on any one of these five people, they'll be there for you. And of course, I'm always going to be your pastor. I know, Tyler, you've got like your own pastor, but you know what? Um, <laughs> I'm here for you too. So, thank both of you, 
very much. I'm going to deeply miss both of you. And I love you both. God bless you. Gentlemen, will you turn around and face to your friends and family and receive their congratulations?
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, this evening we give you thanks for two very, very special young men, Aiden and Tyler. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given them. We thank you for all of the gifts of uh, intelligence and warm, caring hearts that you also gave them. You've given them wonderful families, and you've also given them eternal life through their Savior, Jesus. You've given them faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you've allowed them to be taught everything they need to know about Jesus and their salvation. We ask that you would be with them and their families this summer and be with them especially next school year as they transition into a new setting. Uh, remind them that they have everything that they need to succeed and they also have you. Uh, give them wisdom to make wise choices and to work hard and give them the courage to seek out assistance as they need it and keep providing for them all that they need as you have done so far. We ask that you would do this in the name of Jesus in whose words we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. so much for coming, and I'd like to invite everyone to join us for a reception that some of the seventh grade parents have put together for us. So thank you so much, and we'll see you up for some fun and fellowship and further congratulations for our graduates. Thank you. Uh -huh.